Welcome back, y'all. It is Tuesday, which means it is time for another tank review. Now, because so many people have requested that I actually do a secondary review of the Betta Flow Soothe after getting it actually all scaped out and truly set up. So here we go. Now, oh my gosh, I did want to get a video of me scaping out the tank, but unfortunately, the footage turned out absolute terribleness. It was just a blurry, blurry mess. I think because it's just the way that the tank is set up and where the tank is set up. And I had my camera set on autofocus like a fool. So none of my footage turned out well at all. I started to actually think that I was never gonna be able to scape this tank out because I drove to several different locations just to get the very few plants that I really wanted for this tank set up. And then on top of that, I ordered rocks and I ordered my substrate online because weirdly enough, I could not find fluorite substrate at any of the stores. They were all completely out. So I ordered that and I ordered my rocks online and of course they delivered them to the wrong address. Luckily, luckily, since I have amazing neighbors, the people that they had delivered my packages to ended up bringing them to my house. Thank goodness, because I really started to think that maybe this project was doomed. So without further ado, let's get into what I absolutely love and don't quite love so much about this tank. So for starters, let's just go ahead and ignore all the little wire mess that I have going on on the side of the tank. That's gonna get taken care of. I needed to buy more zip ties. I ran out of zip ties, which I use and absolutely love and recommend if you want to deal with all your wires and get those nice and straightened up. The filter on this thing, seriously, is completely silent. Like I cannot hear anything. Seriously, every time I turn the light on on this thing, my camera light actually starts dimming. You can kind of get a better idea of how bright this light really is now that the aquarium is scaped, but it really still doesn't quite do it justice of how bright this lighting is. So I did go ahead and put some Amazon sword plants in the back. And then of course we've got my nice black and gray and white rocks that I added in here. Then right in front of the rocks, I went ahead and put some crypts in, and then I added some dwarf hair grass throughout the tank, which hopefully that will start carpeting soon and really fill in and start looking amazing. So I am pretty excited with how this tank did turn out. Now, some of the things that I don't fully love about this tank that I didn't notice at first is that this lid is a little bit more wobbly than I would have preferred. Now, I mean, it is a pretty tightly fitted lid as far as your fish being able to get out. But as a cat owner, I do worry that my cats might figure out that they can pull this off. I have had one cat previously pull a tank lid off before and it was not pretty. So that is one thing that I don't absolutely love about this. The other thing that I kind of don't absolutely love, but at the same time I kind of do, is that, is that with having this shape of a tank, it can cause a little bit of a magnification effect um, on your background, like the back, the back half of the tank. So my plants and my background kind of appear a little bit larger than they actually are on camera. Now, having said that, I actually do kind of like the magnification effect. It kind of creates an interesting, it kind of creates a more interesting look and it makes my background really, really pop. But I'm not really sure how that's gonna work out once I actually add a fish in that when it swims towards the back of the tank, it might look a little weird. So I'm not 100% sure. I do still really, really like this tank so far, but it has only been up and running for about a week now. So only time is going to tell whether or not my plants are gonna grow well. I am dosing the tank with CO2 to try to help get this grass going and carpeting. And of course, I'm gonna be dosing it regularly with fertilizers and of course, adding root tabs as needed. 
So there is a little bit of work involved. I'm hoping that these lights are gonna be bright enough to be able to grow these plants. If not, I do have a backup plan. So these plants are gonna grow no matter what, but I'm not 100% sure if they will grow well on this light alone. I'm sure that the swords are gonna do great because I'm, I have grown those in pretty low lit tanks before. Um, same with the crypts. I'm a little bit concerned with how well the grass is going to go ahead and grow. So all in all, I would definitely still say that I really, really like this tank so far and that it definitely was worth the money. Now, for those of you out there who were voicing your concerns as far as the round shape of the tank being a problem for bettas or fish in general, having a slight curvature to a tank is gonna be very different from having a spherical tank. The spherical tanks, like bowls, are going to create that weird fisheye effect that you see. Whereas having a curved tank, while it will cause some distortion, it's only going to cause a little bit of a magnification effect, and it is going to make taking photos a little bit more tricky, a little bit more difficult, as there's a lot more surface for light to reflect off of. So there might be a little bit more of an issue as far as getting good photographs when you're trying to take pictures of your tank just because of how the light is going to hit this tank. And like I said, it does cause a little bit of a distortion. As I pointed out, some of the things like towards the back of the tank look a little bit larger than they actually are in reality. But overall, there's not a whole lot of distortion going on in this tank. So anyway, guys, that's all I really have for y'all today. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!